Hello, everybody. So let's go ahead and get started with our lecture. We're um, on module four, week five, uh, dynamometer operation. So the dynamometer is a very important tool. And even though many, many shops don't actually have dynamometers, if, if you work in a smog shop or in a performance shop, you might have a dynamometer. The dynamometer, though, will, will vary depending on the application and the uses for that dynamometer. Now, if you're in a smog shop and the, um, the shop performs ASM testing, that is acceleration simulation mode testing, then you will have a what we call a chassis dynamometer. And the chassis dynamometer is, uh, is very useful. That's the kind of, that we're gonna be focusing on today. The other dynamometer that I haven't mentioned is of course a horsepower dynamometer or something they call it an engine dynamometer um, and that's that's typically typically used for um, performance applications to figure out uh, how much horsepower and or torque a engine transmission combination can can produce so um, those have been around for many, many years. The, the type that, I'm, that we're gonna talk about is, was typically introduced into many shops way back in, the 19, in 1997. It became mandatory for smog shops to incorporate the chassis dynamometer. Um, there's two basic kinds. There's the Clayton style dynamometer, and then there's also the Maha style dynamometer. Both of these dynamometers are actually in our shops. We're very fortunate to have the amount of dynamometers that we have. And the thing about the dynamometers is that we're going to use them for uh, various applications. We're going to use them for t engine testing. We're going to use them throughout the semester. We're going to, uh, and I'll show you the, the sheets that we're going to use, but we're going to use them for everything from checking emissions to checking fuel systems um, and, and other performance issues. And um, the thing that I wanted to mention was that if you work in a shop or are hired by a shop that has a dynamometer, it's very useful to use these tools. Many shops do not. Many shops use it for smogs and the dyno just sits there, okay? Um, you guys have been trained already on how to calibrate them. We're gonna calibrate them again so you get the, the, so you get the uh, a full understanding of that, but this, week, this lab, we're going to go ahead and run emissions testing like we did previously, but we're going to run emissions testing on the chassis dynamometer, okay? So I'm going to run through this lecture. It shouldn't be very long. I'm going to, we'll take it in small bites, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we can go ahead and start the, um, start the uh, PowerPoint presentation. And okay, let me open my share screen here. And uh, when we do that, I'm going to go ahead and bring up our PowerPoint presentation for the day. And it starts off with a relatively uh, common question. It says, uh, it says, what advantages, let me move my picture to the side there. What advantages does a dynamometer offer. Now, the funny thing about this word is that it's relatively uh, unused in the, in the in the language. And um, let me go back one slide here. Here we go. Actually, it asks, what is a dynamometer? So that is the correct spelling there, just in case you're wondering. There, you'll sometimes see it D-Y-N-O uh, or in two, different, in, two, um, in two different words. Sometimes you'll see it dyno slash monitor. Um, but that's actually the correct way to, to, to to write this, okay, is dynamometer. Sometimes we see the abbreviation just dyno. That's why we get that confused. But um, you know me, I'm a little bit uh, picky about how we spell and, and write things. So just that's the correct spelling there, okay? So dynamometer says, what is a dynamometer? Well, um, as this gentleman is impl uh, Im implying here, it's simply a performance meter, right? It's a, simply a performance meter uh, that, we can, that we can drive the vehicle with, okay? Because if we take and um, um, if we take and try to think about how would we check a vehicle under real world situations, that is, how can we drive the vehicle and at the same time test it? Okay, as you see here, this gentleman is trying to drive alongside the vehicle, uh, hauling a analyzer along with uh, 
uh, with some test tools. And of course, that's, that's not relevant, right? That's not going to happen. But if we, if we take and we use a dynamometer, then we can have the vehicle stationary and we can test all the different engine systems. So it's very useful. Now, you might be saying, what if I never use a dynamometer? What, is, what good is this training going to do me? Well, the thing about this training is that you'll get to see what real numbers will look like on a dynamometer. Okay, so if you look at a dynamo, you can, you can, you'll know, you, you'll know, and I, I'm hoping you'll, you'll pay really close attention, keep your lab sheets, so you'll know what the numbers are supposed to look like. So then, eventually, if you drive, if you, if you're test driving a vehicle and you use, let's say, a, a scan tool, because you can drive it with a scan tool, then you'll know what the numbers are supposed to be. Okay, so even though you're, you, if you don't have a dynamometer in the future, you can still find out what the numbers should be, what the uh, vo what what the voltages should look like, and all the information that's pertinent to find out finding out the overall performance of the vehicle that you'll be testing. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide here. And on this slide here, we see that we can we can duplicate um, real world driving. That is, we can we can uh, set the dynamometer so that it so that it simulates like we're driving on flat roadways or we're driving on freeways or climbing up mountains or, 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 um, or other driving conditions that require quite a bit of uh, engine power, okay? So we can simulate that really well, okay? And it, all it takes is understanding how to set up the dynamometer, okay? And, okay, so um, the next thing here is that, this section here talks about the FTP, okay, or federal test point limits, and the federal test point limit. Um, it's extensive in your in your uh, in your training as far as, far as your, in your training manual. The only thing that I'm going to talk about the federal test uh, point limits is that that's where we get our actual testing for our smog test in California. Okay, we derived from this. Okay, and if you notice here, it actually has a, a cold transition, how long it, it takes for the vehicle to get cold, and they, and they take and they, uh, they drive it through different stages. Notice the miles per hour on the left here. Okay, so that's, that's how it's, it's, uh, it's simulated to, to simulate or to, uh, to copy real world conditions. Um, but for our purposes, I'll go into, in just a few uh, slides, I'll show you what the test procedure is for California, okay? So uh, moving on a little bit here. So we talked a little bit about what we could use a dynamometer for, like as we said over here, we could, we could, we could test it we, without having, ha um, having to have um, the vehicle being driven. We can drive it, we can have it in the shop, okay? Which is very convenient, especially in the Bay Area where uh, the roadways are many times packed and we can't get along, get on, get around very well. Well, we can simply drive the vehicle in the shop on the dynamometer and use that as a reference. Okay, some shops don't like to use them because they say they're going to break the machine. It's they're actually very robust, and the we've had very good luck with our dynamometers, and they have not been out of service the entire time that I've been uh, at Skyline. Okay, which by the way is over six years. In case you were interested. Okay, so. So again, that's what that's a really big advantage. Okay, and again, we will be using them um, in all our different areas. We're going to start with the exhaust emissions testing, which we'll do on uh, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we'll move on to uh, when we do engine testing, we'll use the dynamometers again. When we do ignition system testing, back on the dynamometers, fuel system testing, back on the dynamometers. Okay, all the way until we go back. We, we circle back and go back to emission components testing, then we'll use the dynos one more time. So it's very important that we get the most out of this training and we learn the ins and outs of the dynamometer, uh, how to use it, how to calibrate it, um, how to use it safely, okay? And, um, and many times people are, can shy away from the dynamometer because it seems like this uh, huge machine that can um, you know, cause damage or can, you know, if used incorrectly, can maybe uh, cause an, uh, an accident, but uh, it's not. It's actually a very, very safe device. And many times we use it um, without even having to take and strap the vehicle down. Okay, as a matter of fact, most shops do not. Most shops, because they're very safe, they're, they're, it's called, uh, they're called inertia 
dynamometers or inertia, um, eddy current, um, uh, chassis dynamometers. They're not like the typical horsepower dynamometers. So they're very, very safe, okay? So let's get that out of the way right now. Okay, and then again, moving on, where, like I said, it's very useful because we can simulate real world driving conditions, um, everything from a, from, a no, from a low load to a high load to, to a full power, okay? Um, and just so you know, we can measure horsepower, but we can only measure in the, uh, in the, in the lower ranges, okay? We can lower in the lower ranges, and it actually just takes a, uh, an average of the uh, of the engine output and gives us a, a a close average of what the horsepower is. Okay, but it by no means does a uh, real world accurate testing of the maximum horsepower. That's again, that's not the kind of dynamometer that we'll be using. Okay, all right. So moving on, um, and I talked about the federal test point limits. Um, please take and take a second and review that in your manuals. And then here is the uh, something that's called um, the way that we sample these, where, where we use these for sampling in the smog program. Notice that we take a what we call a constant volume sampling. That is that we're attached, we hook up to the tailpipe, and we measure the amount of, ex of uh, exhaust coming from the tailpipe. And as it goes into into the actual analyzer, which is not part of the dynamometer, of course, right? But we use that dynamometer to simulate again the amount of power that that engine is going to put out and we can take an accurate uh, reading of the exhaust gases. That's, that's the main, that's the main uh, reason that it's used in, in shops in California. Okay. But again, we can use it for engine testing as well. Okay. Um, and here's the different components of the, um, of the chassis dynamometer. Um, the chassis dynamometer is going to have a, have a, a one of the most important things are is, is the scale. That way, it can weigh the vehicle, and we can adjust the load. Okay, we can adjust the load, and it will take and um, simulate either you know five, ten, twenty percent horsepower added to the vehicle, and we can take and and use that in order to simulate driving conditions. Okay. Um, of course, the one of the most important parts of the dynamometer are the um, is the uh, brake assembly, right? The brake assembly because it takes it can take and it um, by applying current, by applying current, it can actually take and 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 apply load to the vehicle. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, pause this for now, and I'm going to show you a video on how the eddy current uh, is applied, okay? To understand the eddy current, you have to understand how uh, magnetism plays a role in the braking system, okay? And, it's in, and you studied this in electricity, so it should be familiar, but I'm gonna pause this for now, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the uh, video, okay? And then I'll come back to uh, this in a second. 